Hello, today I'll be talking with you about representing column vectors. To start off with, I want to introduce you to what a column vector is. A column vector is basically a translation, like in transformations. And it is represented by a bracket with two numbers in there. A number above and a number below inside those brackets. The top number here represents movement in a horizontal direction and the bottom number here represents movement in a vertical direction. If the 2 is positive it means 2 to the right and, and if the 5 is positive it means 5 up. Like this. You can see that every point on this right angle triangle has moved 2 to the right and 5 up. If I switch the 5 and the 2 the movement instead becomes 5 right and 2 up as shown. If I change the 5 to a minus 5 that changes the direction of the movement in the horizontal direction so that instead of moving to the right it moves to the left. So it still moves 2 up but the 5 is now to the left instead. So you can spot the mistake in this movement. You can see that each point has moved not 5 to the left, but if you count this, start with this point here, it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to the left, then 2 up. So this transformation, this column vector should be minus 7, 2. So it should look like this instead. Finally, if we change the number at the bottom of the bracket to be negative, this changes the up to down. So negative for the bottom of the bracket is down, as shown here. Okay. So what I'd like you to do is think about, and if you have a pen and paper, write down the column vector that describes the translation from triangle A to triangle B. And then have a think about the transformation to get from triangle B to triangle A. What's similar and what's different about between the two? So to show you some possible answers, we have the vector 2, 2, 2 right, 2 up, 3 right, 2 up, 2 right, 3 up, or 3 right, 3 up. A common problem is to start counting from one point, 1, 2, and then finish as soon as they get to another point, as you, as you get to another point on the other triangle. So one, two, one, two. And a, so a common misconception would be to say that this trans transformation is, this translation is two, two. However, it's about one point to its corresponding point. This point is the top left of the triangle, the same as this point here. You can see that whenever we did the transformation, tra the translations earlier, that the shape didn't rotate, didn't it didn't uh, ha didn't flip over in a mirror image of itself, uh, it didn't enlarge anything like that. So this point has to go to this point here. So it goes two right and three up. Therefore, we have the vector two three. To get from triangle B to triangle A we're going in the opposite direction and so therefore we're going two left and three down so all of these have two to the left but only these two have a three and only this one represents down because this is up three therefore we have minus two minus three something that you may have noticed doing this yourselves is that this vector here has the same numbers as this one here it's just that the signs are different that's because if you change the signs in a vector in a, in a, in a translation the movement is in the opposite direction so the vector 2 3 opposite to that would be minus 2 3 the vector 2 minus 3 the opposite to that would be minus 2, 3. In this diagram, 
Dora represents the vector 2, 3 as a line with an arrow. How is this the same or different from the translations that we were looking at? Well, first of all, this representation is going from a point to a point. It's not a sh how a shape has been moved across a grid. It describes the movement itself, not show, not the shape and the shape and trying to describe what happens between the two. It shows how that point would go to here in this translation, in this vector. And this is a really useful way of representing vectors. How will this representation differ from minus 2, minus 3? Well, as we've seen, as we saw on the previous slide, 2, 3, changing to minus 2, minus 3, should go in the opposite direction. Therefore, it would look exactly the same as this, except the arrow would be in the opposite direction. It would go from here to here, rather than here to here. And it's useful to note, that it doesn't matter where we start, we could have started here as long as we finished um, in the correct place compared to where we started. So this is a task for you to just finish off this video, have a go, see how you do, see if you can remember all the things that you've learned and put it into practice.